What's up guys, it's your favorite QB coach and welcome to part three of Ryo Ishikawa's Swing Analysis. So if you guys haven't watched part one and part two, go check them out. We highlighted in part one basically some take home points with his backswing that you guys should use and utilize in your game. Part two, we started getting into some of the reasons why on his downswing, we might be getting a little bit out of positions and definitely struggling. Now this last part basically is gonna elaborate a little bit more on part two. That really got a messed up, right? So let's kind of go into the driver and look at this, but we'll get back to the setup because again, guys, this is gonna be a number one thing that I think we're gonna recommend for Rio is getting, making sure that his armpits are a little bit more on this line. So as he's basically getting a little bit taller right here to make sure that he's a little bit more back on the line. But we'll come back to that though. So anyways, we got line drive in Rio over here on the right of your screen. So first things first, what they probably changed was they got him to go a little bit more of a tiger pivot, right? They like to teach a bump in Japan. So to match up a bump, you better be moving your sternum off the golf ball a decent amount, right? So what they taught him basically was to go into front bend with rotation, Move your head off the ball a decent amount, move your sternum off the ball, get a little bit more width so you can bump forward and get more power, right? That's the idea. So anyways, you can see, as we can see, sternum's moving off the golf ball. He's pretty much in a good, he, he looks like Tiger in 2000. He's in a good position, right? So what he's doing good is, notice how his pelvis is not dipped yet, right? So his le lead side pelvis is not lower than the right. That's a good sign here, right? So that's a pretty powerful pivot, I would I would say now. I'd ideally like to see a little bit more of a centered pivot, have him set up with the tilt, and then basically you can think about it as turning around it, even though you technically move off it, then you move a little bit forward, and then a centered pivot's never actually staying completely centered. It is moving around, it just overall all is centered that, that's what you kind of got kind of got to get it's a little bit kind of um, complicated but so anyways from here you can see that he's getting that nice little pressure shift into the lead side which is great this pelvis is starting to lower which is great this knee right here we're gonna watch it watch as it starts going into external rotation which is great all the natural good moves that a great player does that he had in his old swing he's keeping some of it right which is great now what I don't like is notice this knee so this knee starts working in, in internal rotation very very early almost from the start right so most good drivers nowadays have a little bit of external rotation before it kicks in his just is immediately pretty much kicking in internal internal and once the hands are level the hips he's definitely kicked this in internal rotation right which is basically the knee looking a little bit like this now the reason why we don't like that is because that's getting the hip bone to go and move this way which basically means the, there's a whole little ball and socket on the hip bone when that ball goes up towards the top of the socket it locks in place it pressures continuously push that way which i use the bump and extending and basically from there the mid spine the thoracic can't rotate when that is locked in place right now it also has to do a little bit with lordosis as well right so whenever you get this motion where that can internal and this raises that pushes you out of lordosis your natural tilt in that spine strains it out a little bit which also makes the mid spine not be able to rotate and puts a lot of pressure on the lumbar spine which is really bad for your basically if you want to be injury free that's really bad <laughs> so anyways um from here there's a little stall out but luckily for rio he does what all great players does he has a nice little supination and flexion move and he gets a pretty stable roc or rate of closure through that impact zone i would argue and then goes from there so when he's playing good he probably plays a nice little probably like a 15 yard draw with the driver maybe like more so like a five little seven yard draw which is totally fine right but when he's off and not controlling that club face that's when he starts getting the crazy ones right so what i would like to see is when he's off i would rather him be off and have a more of a neutral path than a very far into out path or even a very far out to end path right that's why we don't like players swinging too far one way or the other right because then you really got to start if you're off with the club face let's say you swing seven degrees to the left but subconsciously your brain knows the targets there and your club face is pointing at that target <sighs> you're getting a huge slice, right? So that's kind of why we'd rather see it a little bit more of a neutral path. That way, most people try to have the club face pointing a relatively around target. And if you start swinging too far the other way, unless you're consciously thinking about it and you know of it, you're most likely not gonna match up that face of where you're swinging, right? You'd have to be a pretty, you'd have to have a lot of time on a track, man, and you would have to, you would have to train your brain to be able to do that. That would be something, most players aren't gonna do that, right? So anyways, with Rio, to neutral out his path, let's go back to the down the line view. First things first, like we just said a little bit earlier, let's get his 
armpits a little bit more on this line, right? So we're gonna get him standing a little bit taller with the chest, right? That doesn't mean the knees are gonna extend. We're just gonna get the chest to extend ever so slightly. Now from there, I'm not gonna really mess with his backswing. I ideally would like to see a center pivot, but it's okay for him to move off the ball. We're not gonna really get into that. The main thing we're gonna work on for him is let's get this knee not, not working so far into internal rotation as early. So basically right around here when the hands are level the hips, we're gonna see the middle of the kneecap would be at the middle of this circle to maybe ever so slightly right in middle that's gonna get his pelvis line basically not as the, uh, not as much of the lead side uh, uh, above the right and it's gonna be a little bit more level to even a little bit more down at this point point. and then from here we're gonna talk a lot about getting his axis of the median of the cap basically to rotate notice how this is pointing pretty much down here right down there down there down there and now it starts to rotate I would ideally like pretty much at this position I like most people's median of the cap to be pointing like right Right here at this position so his head releasing a little bit earlier so that's number two or number three right so set up internal rotation of the knee making it sure it's a little bit more external in transition and then it can work internal number three is making sure that the median of the cap is releasing and then from there I think number four is gonna happen naturally notice how right before impact if we draw a line from the hip bone straight down notice how it's pretty much almost on the outside part of the foot well I would ideally instead of the tailbone continuously moving forward and extending so his tailbone is going forward, 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 extend. I would like to see it go lower, forward, forward, start rotating and working backwards, and then push forward a little bit more, right? Once it's kind of gotten around, then it can push forward and up. That would be the difference, right? And that's gonna get him basically at this position, the tailbone, instead of it being right here, the tailbone's gonna be kind of where his uh, groin is right now, and it's gonna be a little bit more that way, and that's gonna allow him to basically rotate a little bit more Efficiently, it's also gonna be the biggest factor in making sure that he's neutraling out that path and not swinging so far to the right. All right guys, so I know that was a lot of stuff to digest. Uh, watch this video through a few times because there's so many players out there, especially the Japanese audience that will be watching this later, of you guys who bump like this and bump incorrectly, right? It's okay to bump. Just make sure that you're not kicking that knee internal so quick. Make sure that you're getting, as you're bumping, you're also making sure that you're rotating, letting the head medium the cap rotate and also getting that stern tailbone instead of it moving continuously forward having a little bit of a backwards movement and then a push that's greatly going to help your ability to stabilize out your path you're not going to swing so far right you're going to have better control of the face a lot of great things all right guys so that was the last part to Rio Ishikawa's swing analysis I hope you guys enjoyed this type of analysis leave a comment down below let me know if you guys enjoyed it smash that like button as always and please 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 Hit that red subscribe button. Alright guys, hope you guys have a good one and play some good golf out there. Peace.